So here's the thing, right? When, when Liam messaged me to speak here, he said, you can do the opening keynote. And I was like, cool, I can do that. Uh, the weird thing is I prefer closing keynotes. I really do, because it means I get to listen to what everybody says, and then I get the rant. Well, now you get to do both. Nice. <laughs> so, bunch of stuff that I really wish I or somebody else had said. Bunch of stuff a bunch of people did say that I wanted to repeat. Basically, me being not angry, but kind of like, please put this in your brain and take it away if you leave here. Uh, in no particular order, because I completely forgot at what point during the day I made these notes. So this is just shit I want to talk about. Um, fuck that. I really need to get better at throwing shit on chairs. This is like the second time I do that, and no. Okay, so, please communicate using the relevant media, okay? Uh, there was an audio designer on stage earlier. There you are. Um, and one very important thing that was mentioned was if you're going to be talking about sound, use sound. You can use sound. If you're communicating about art, use art. If you're communicating about design, use something that you can play, you can interact with, right? So when I talk to my sound designer, I don't go, I need this explosion to be a bit more rumbly. What the fuck does rumbly mean? <laughs> what is that? I go, no, no, it sounds like and what I need is like I want that. And if necessary, I will record it. My Slack with my sound designer is just random recordings of me making sounds with my face. <laughs> and if I try to communicate with an artist, remember when I did that thing with Super Mario Bros? You know how you could have prevented that? Make a drawing of what you think I want. Because if you draw a 2D Super Mario, I would have to be like, well, that's not quite what I was thinking. But nobody does that. So try to communicate in, in people's language. If you're a programmer and you try to talk to an artist, draw. I suck at drawing. But when I want to communicate with Paul, with our artist, and go like, eh, this is not quite right, I will draw on his art. <laughs> and it will piss him off. <laughs> but it will work. And if I need to draw a cow, I will literally draw a circle with four like, lines under it and put an arrow with the word cow above it. <laughs> if it is necessary, but communicate in people's language. For a programmer, make a flowchart, make something systemic, like try to figure out what language people speak and then speak their language, because there is a lot of time you can waste on miscommunicating, and um, it's uh, far easier to miscommunicate than to communicate. Now another thing is, this one pisses me off endlessly. Just the other day I had an artist reach out to me, and she said, I have a problem. The problem is that I work with a programmer in my team. And the programmer said to me, I don't like your art style because it doesn't fit with my vision of the project. And the only proper answer is he can go fuck himself. <laughs> Here's the thing. Your opinion is going to be relevant in some cases and not relevant in other cases. And somebody else's opinion is going to be relevant in some cases and less relevant in other cases. If your programmer is telling you that your art doesn't fucking fit his vision for the project, then who the fuck is that person? They're a programmer. If they were good at art, you know what they would be? An artist. Because <laughs> that's how it works, right? So try to think about when an opinion is relevant and when it's not relevant. Don't forget, like, it's always valuable to offer a perspective, but you don't get the authority of saying, this doesn't fit the vision, to somebody who's far better at that job than you are. You get to, yes, suggest that maybe, you know, if this is a very serious game, going for, like, a chibi manga art style might not be the optimal thing, but hey, your artist probably knows what they're doing, and if not, why the fuck are you working with them? Right? So don't be that person. Now, <laughs> we've, we've, I'm doing a lot of shouting right now, um, but uh, Boat, Yug, and a bunch of other people talked about being a people person. Generally what that means in the industry is just don't be a fucking asshole. <laughs> be a good human, be a nice human, listen to other people, listen to, listen to their body language, see if they're uncomfortable. 
See if they're comfortable. See if you can make them comfortable. Feel, don't feel like it's a failure if a conversation doesn't work out. Just walk away from a conversation that doesn't work, right? Like, that's not a bad thing. Give people space. Give them breathing room. Um, an example I loved was about the, the Ubi, was it Ubisoft guy? Yeah. Where a lot of people were asking him about his old job. That's awkward as fuck. Like, why would you do, like, that's annoying. Like, everybody has a different perspective, and you can usually very easily tell when somebody is being very professional. So if somebody, if somebody gets like 20 questions and their answer is, well, that's a very good question, I don't think I can talk about it. You know what you should not do is ask it again in different words. <laughs> okay, people do that all the time. Now, one way you can avoid that mistake is by learning about what jobs exist in the industry. Now, it's really fun to just focus on your one thing and hone that and craft that, but as, uh, where did Ken go? Ken, as Ken said, an industry is people. And there's a lot of people in this industry with a lot of perspectives, and guess what, we're not all alike. An audio designer is not an artist, is not a programmer, is not a producer, is not a, develop, is not a, a programmer, is not a writer, is not an industry, I don't know, connector, is not an event manager, is not. The thing is, you can learn to communicate with all of them. You can learn to speak their language. And honestly, you fucking should. This is the games industry. You're trying to be part of this industry, and yes, there's a lot of different people, but yes, you can do the effort to get to know them. Yes, you can do the effort to learn about different perspectives, about different attitudes, about different things. So yes, go out there and find things that you don't know, find things that you don't understand, find things you're uncomfortable. This is an industry, right? Industry is people. Who here read the news today? The, not the CNN news, the games news. Okay, so if I say congregate, who knows what they did? Congregate. Yeah, what, what was their news about them? It was in the news today, actually. Okay, they're going to Steam. Big deal. Indie publisher going to Steam. A lot of reputation, a lot of games funded. If you're going to be independent developers, you should know that, right? What did uh, Kaleidoscope announce? They work with Oculus. Fun for independent creators doing VR. They literally are throwing money at you. Hello? It's in the news. It's on gamesindustry.biz. Palmer Lucky. Long story. <laughs> Who knows Tencent? Raise your hand if you've heard of Tencent. How important do you think Tencent is in the industry? They're at the top. They're, they're absolutely at the top. I think everybody in this room is secretly like funded by Tencent. And if you just search your, your house, there'll be a contract that you signed like a decade ago. Uh, Tencent is literally the largest thing in our industry. If you read the games industry news, you would have seen it. Um, there was a report today that the top 25 largest games companies in the world together earn $35 billion. 40% of that was mobile. So. That's the thing. Uh, the Switch. There was news about the Nintendo Switch today. What was it? Multi-touch. It does have multi-touch. Uh, the resolution is 720p. Um, does anybody know why Bethesda was in the news recently? Stop sending review copies. What does that mean? I don't know if it fucking means anything, but it's in the fucking news, so you should probably know about it. You're going to be part of this industry. Right? And part of this industry is knowing the people, and part of the industry is knowing the industry. It's knowing the movement and the flow and things that are changing and seeing where opportunities are. You know how you can make yourself better at this immediately? Find a games industry news site. Not Polygon, not Kotaku, not uh, any of those. No, an industry website. Gamasutra, which is still the worst named website in the history of anything ever. <laughs> or gamesindustry.biz or whatever, I don't really care. Find a website that reports on our industry and make it your fucking homepage. Just read it, and then you can click it away. You can click it away after glancing at it, I don't care. But whether you're an artist or a programmer or a producer or marketing, this is your industry. This is where you want to earn your money. You might as well start taking it really fucking seriously to know what the fuck's happening. Uh, I always get angry about that one, sorry. So, it's a thing. Um, so here's another thing. Uh, a lot of people come to me and they're like, I wish I had done that. 
and I appreciate the sentiment, but I, I personally, and this is me personally, I don't think regret is particularly helpful here. Yes, you're gonna fuck up. Yes, I fucked up. I did a talk a while ago where I explained how I cost Vlambeer. Personally, I cost Vlambeer $1.3 million just by stupid fuck-ups I did. Because I don't, like everybody says, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just figuring shit, I'm a programmer. And suddenly I was running a company. Suddenly people were asking me to speak. I went to South Africa one day, and a kid asked me, uh, a, 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 a teacher got me to speak for the local university of game designers, and a kid asked me, Rami, you dropped out. Should I drop out? And I was like, well, you know, that's a personal question, that's a personal question and you should, you should see for yourself if you want to. Usually if, if somebody asks me whether they should drop out, I say no, because if you should drop out, it doesn't matter what answer I give. Right? Like, if you really want to drop out, you should already be 100% sure about it. The teacher grabbed me and, like, pretty much tried to murder me, I think. Uh, and you know what she said? She said, no, you're a fucking idiot. Here's what happens. You can do that in the Netherlands because it's a socialist country. If you do that in South Africa, you know what happens? They die. They die in poverty because they never graduated. And you know what? I had never fucking considered that. I had never even considered that. And here I was on a stage telling a kid to literally throw away their future and die of poverty without even knowing it, right? I fucked up. And after she told me that, I went back on the stage and I apologized for being completely and utterly unaware of my privilege and explained to them that they should probably not do that thing I just said because that will probably mean they die in poverty. I fucked up. Everybody fucks up. Now, I can regret having said that or I can be really glad for the opportunity to have learned that. And I choose to do the latter. Now, emotions are complex, and you don't always get to control how you feel about things. But if you, if you feel regret about something, see if you can see the value in what you've learned from it. I find that's a very constructive way of dealing with regret. I have three more things. I have time. There is this person in the games industry, and I was just telling a bunch of people there uh, about that person. Their name is Lauren. His name is Lauren Bednar. Here's the thing about Lauren. Lauren one day appeared on Twitter, out of nowhere, right? And Lauren started following all of these developers, um, all of these developers that I really like, Adam Saltzman, uh, Phil Fish, Jonathan Blow, uh, Anna Anthropy, all sorts of people. And Lauren would start responding to their tweets. It would always be pleasant, always be friendly, which is nice on Twitter, you know? That's, that's good to see. And every now and then, a developer at some point would start responding because they had seen Lauren a bunch of times and they'd be like, oh yeah, that, that person, that's a nice person. And they would have a little conversation on Twitter and it would be just this tiny little conversation. And one day, Lauren started posting procedural art. Procedural art generated by algorithms. And it was, it was pretty, it was nice, it was good art. Uh, and because we had noticed Lauren and we had followed Lauren, uh, we would see that. So after a year of that, I would go to conferences, and we would talk about Lauren. We'd talk about Lauren, about Lauren's work, about what Lauren did, about the things Lauren made. And the conversation would always be the same. It would be like, oh, did you see that thing with like the ship, and it was like kind of glitchy, and like the, you know, the red one. And it's like, yeah, 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 that was real. Did you see the preview? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, Lauren is so good, yeah. Have you, have you met Lauren? No? <laughs> Lauren, Lauren is kind of an, do you know, do you know what gender Lauren is? No? Has anybody ever seen Lauren? No? Anybody? Anybody ever met Lauren? Nobody had ever met Lauren. Nobody ever. But we all knew Lauren because Lauren was hanging out with us on Twitter and was treating us like humans and talking to us and being friendly and being a nice, pleasant person. It took until uh, three years later that I first met Lauren. Um, Lauren turned out to, um, to Indicate, and I was at Indicate, and this random guy starts talking to me. And uh, eventually I asked, so, so what do you do? And he said, well, I make procedural art. I'm like, cool, cool, where do you post it? And he's like, mostly on Twitter. Like, what's your, uh, what's your name? He's like, Lauren. I'm like, Lauren! <laughs> you are Lauren! And I think Adriel, my, my fiancé right there, she was on the other side of the event, and I literally yelled for her across everybody else. I was like, Adriel, this is Lauren! <laughs> Lauren Badner! Lauren was, and 20 people turned their head and they were like, that's Lauren? <laughs> Social media is powerful. 
Don't forget that. What you say on social media has an impact. And it can be a beautiful networking tool. It can be a way to introduce yourself to people that you won't have time to talk to at events. It will be a way to make connections with people that you won't see because they live on the other side of the planet. A large part of what it is is be a pleasant human, interact with people when they want to, don't interact with people when they clearly don't, don't force your opinion on people, just be a pleasant person, talk to them. Now, the other thing about Lauren Bettner's story that I really like is that the, the most powerful thing Lauren did was just repetition. Lauren was just there. This industry is an experience-based industry, right? You can read books every day. You can do research every day. You can, um, you can talk to other people every day. In the end, it's still going to be experience. And yes, all of those things are experience, but doing, doing as several of us have pointed out, doing is at the core of everything, right? And yes, a book can make you better at doing, but in the end, if you don't do stuff, you're not going to get the experience you need. Repeating a thing over and over is so crucial to so many things that we do. The first time I meet most of you here today, if, if I haven't met you before, chances that I will remember you in two weeks, very little. That's not me trying to be mean. I go to a lot of events. I would guess most of the speakers go to a lot of events. And if you are a person we have never met before that comes up and asks us a single question and then disappears, chances are I won't remember you. If you try to talk to me for 20 minutes, I might get a little bit annoyed at you because there's more people that want to talk to me. So here's the thing, no matter what game you play, chances are I won't remember you in two weeks. And I'm not trying to be mean. But if you leave an, Im an impression today and we meet again in three months, you can be like, oh yeah, yeah, we talked at GCAP. And here's a networking tip that a uh, guy didn't mention. Every time you meet somebody, just for their sake, pretend you've never met. Not like, pretend you've never met as in, oh my God, so good to meet you. Just be like, oh yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah, things at Flamber are good. I've just mentioned my game studio, right? So if they forgot who I was, Flamber. Um, yeah, I think things with GW are good. Um, you can mention your name. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we met, uh, remember I'm, this person. And like, you don't have to make it super awkward, but just try to slip in as many hints as possible. Like, give me something. Like, give me something to not make this super awkward. Most people will be really good at saying like, I'm so sorry, I forgot who you are. Some people aren't quite as comfortable with that, right? So the second time we meet, maybe I'll remember you a bit more. The third time we meet, we might be friends. Like, that's the way things work. A lot of things are repetition. Repetition. Marketing, same thing. You know how you do good marketing? by doing it a lot. You know how you do good marketing? You start when your game is at the first point where you can present it. And then you repeat and you iterate. Repeat and iterate, repeat and iterate. Everything in our industry, repeat and iterate. Do it again, do it better. Do it again, do it better. Do it again, do it again. Keep doing it until at one point you do it well. But you keep doing it until it works. I even repeat it, do it again three times. Did that work better? Of course that worked better. I could have said do it again, but if I say it three times, it sticks. Here's, a, here's another thing that I think is really important. If you talk to people, there's a thing we do as humans that's really, really sort of a, it's a weird person, like just a weird human thing. We say no a lot. Uh, a guy was pointing out we say sorry a lot. We all say no a lot. Uh, you know what's, what um, improv people do? They have a golden rule. Yes and. yes and. Yes and. Yes and. Make that part of who you are. Yes and. Right? Don't kill an idea. Don't kill a thought. Don't kill a perspective. Don't kill a direction. If somebody says, if you really want to eat chicken, and somebody says, I really want to eat spaghetti, you can say no. And then you might eat chicken, or they will say, screw you, I'm making spaghetti anyway. You can also say, spaghetti, yeah, well, what about spaghetti and chicken? Hey. hey, that works. It's so natural when we hear something we disagree with to be like, no, 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 I, uh, 
Yeah, for the art style, should we do uh, should we do like round things with like a big eye in the middle? It's like no, no, no. I was thinking something a bit more serious. Who says an eye thing with a circle can't be serious? I have a character like that in my games. My games are serious. Ser they're serious. Come on, don't. Oh, <laughs> listen. This. <laughs> well done. But yeah, so, so try, try just as an exercise, remove no for a bit, for yes and. I'm not saying like the Jim Carrey movie, just say yes to everything, say no when you mean no. But remove it as your instant response. Like, you don't like it? No, no, don't, don't do that. Say yes and, or say, you know what, just say yes and. Now here's another thing, and all of us did this because we, we prob most of us probably have speaking experience. You know what we're terrified of? that you will listen to us and think we are right. <laughs> this, is fuck, this is fucking terrifying as a public speaker. Remember that story of South Africa? That forever haunts me that I might say something that will lead a student to make a horrible mistake and fuck up their life, okay? So a lot of us do this thing in self-defense that is like, but we're just a perspective, right? Like, don't, don't take us too seriously. Like, you know, it's not gospel. It's like, we do that. And in doing so, sometimes we overdo that, right? So here's the thing. Experience is important, right? I've had six years, and that still makes me less experienced than many of the speakers that were on the stage today. And when we say don't take it as gospel, we say don't blindly take it for truth. But what we're not trying to say is there's no lesson here. There is a lesson here. There is a perspective. In everything that we've said, there's something that we've experienced, something that we learned, something that we believe, that we thought was important enough that of the like 10 minutes we had on our stage today, we took time to address it, right? And we did that because we think that for your future, there is something there. But what we don't want you to do is just take it. No, no, we want you to put it on a table and take your tools to it and just smash it and then look inside and see what you find from your perspective, not from our perspective. When I tell you about how I did marketing, I don't want you to do that marketing. I want you to think about why did I make that choice? Why did we do that? What were the circumstances? What can I learn? How can I smash it and take something out of it for today? Because our perspective, however much we like it to not be, is somewhat old-fashioned. I started six years ago when the world was very different. And you're starting today. And no matter what we do, we cannot have your perspective. I cannot have the perspective of a student looking up at the games industry today, hoping for a job, hoping for their indie hit, hoping for their breakaway hit. I cannot see the opportunities and openings that you see. Oh, I don't, I don't know how Snapchat works. Apparently, that's a thing. Like, no fucking clue. And there's people from earlier generations in the games industry that have no idea how Twitter works. Like, that's just the way things go. So, find your own opportunities. Find your own openings. If you see something that nobody else is doing, that's an opportunity. Go for that. Don't look for other companies to do it because they just can't see it. I can't see it. You can see that because you have that perspective. And the thing about necessity, the thing about the need to succeed, is that it makes you do different things. It makes you do interesting things. It makes you find th opportunities that other people don't see. So find those opportunities. Find those and grasp them and run with them. Now, the final thing, and huh, the final thing I want to say is, if an industry is people, right, then what you've been doing today is taking. All of the speakers here came here to give you a little bit of expertise, to give you a little bit of information, to give you a little bit of perspective. And you are taking. And that is good. And I want you to take as much as you can right now as a student. I want you to reach out to your heroes and email them and ask them questions. I want you to Tap your favorite speaker today on the shoulder or say hi. Say hi, you know what? Say hi. Start with that. I want you to, to, to talk to your favorite speaker today and compliment them with their talk 
and ask them a question and, you know, the question that you wanted to ask but you didn't because you were kind of nervous to raise your hand, right? Ask that question, go to them. I want you to uh, go to events, I want you to uh, ask for grants, I want you to ask for funds, I want you to take as much as you can. Just take. And I don't want you to feel bad about it because all of us did. All of us at one point in our career had no fucking clue what we didn't know. We had no idea what we were missing. We had no idea about how the industry worked. There's still, there's still stuff I learned. I listened to three or four talks today where I was like, oh, that's how that works. Should have known that. Um, but the, you will never have 100% knowledge. You will never know everything. There will always be new things you learn. Now, the reason I want you to take is because if and when you do make it in the future, I want you to give back. I want you to give more than you took. And that's how every single one of us made it. There is no single person in this industry that is in success on their own. There is nobody in this industry that made it on their own. Everybody, every single person, has a wealth of people that spend time on resources, on engines, on open source software, on I don't care what, that help them achieve where they are today. And I want you, when you get there in the future, to be on the stage, or another stage, I don't know where Liam throws this shit in whenever, when you're like 60 years old and GCAP loading 20, what, I don't know how old you are. This is dangerous territory. Um, <laughs> I want you to give, but I want you to not feel bad about taking for now. Just take, just learn, just gain experience, talk to people you look up to, then in the future, I'll look forward to listening to your talks. Thanks so much.